Happy Monday, everybody. It's Sidra with Mental Wellness Monday. What did I just do? Sidra. Okay, that was kind of weird. How are you, everybody? Hope you had a good weekend. I hope you stayed cool if you were in some place that, that was warm. Did you guys hear? It was 131 degrees in Death Valley. Okay, but let's be real. It's called Death Valley. We should not be there anyway. But it was super hot. But just grateful to be here, grateful to be here before you. And if you notice today's live is, I want you to tell me what's your self-confidence superpower. And let me tell you why I thought about this. Um, well, first, my mentor had something that she was talking about self-confidence. And it made me remember a while back, not that long ago, sorry. Um... I was thinking about it, and it was only like about a year ago, um, no, maybe two now, that I thought I had all the self-confidence in the world. Like, you couldn't tell me anything that I wasn't confident. And, um, you know, I'm a boss at work, I can take care of stuff, like, I'm good. And then, in my business, a couple years ago, before it really took off, um... I had to get before some people and I was super shy and I'm never shy. You guys see me, I'm never shy. I was shy, I felt really timid and what I realized later is I didn't have self-confidence because it was outside my comfort zone. It was something I didn't know about. I didn't, I knew how to do businesses but I didn't know how to do this one in this way. And she actually gave me a sheet of paper that I'm going to share with you next week about some things that I could do to build my self-confidence. And you know what? It worked. It worked. And so today what I want to share with you is some of the foundations of like, why should you even care about self-confidence? And some cool things that I learned and I can see now why my lack of self-confidence was hidden and it was because I didn't realize about these imposter things that could actually be diminishing our self-confidence so you're thinking Sidra look this is not that big a deal I got things to worry about but self-confidence can really impact you um, it can create anxiety stress loneliness and an increased likelihood of depression why? Because if you don't feel good about yourself, then guess what? You feel negative about yourself. And that can lead to mental wellness issues. It can cause problems with friendships and romantic relationships. Okay, let's keep it real. Have you guys ever had that friend who they kind of sucked you dry and you didn't have the self-confidence to like, Kind of say, mm -mm, pump your brakes, that's not what we're doing here. Or do you have a need for friends so great that you have people around you that really aren't looking out for your best interests? I don't know, maybe not you, but what about a friend? Um, and if you know somebody who might benefit from this, please share this with them. I think it'd be amazing. Self-confidence can also, also seriously impact our academic and job performance. Okay, why? Because we don't show up in our biggest, most amazing self. Instead, we don't feel confident enough to step into that role. And then lastly, a lack of self-confidence can really lead to an increased vulnerability to drug and alcohol abuse. Why is that? It's because we find ourselves drinking instead of feeling. So we're thinking, oh, I'm just going to have this wine. I'm just going to get some bottles and turn it up. And then what happens is that like becomes our confidence. But then we don't act so well when we have too much alcohol. We don't act so well when we're abusing drugs. And for some of us, the pain is so great that we are actually numbing ourselves to that pain through the use of alcohol and drugs. So you can see this little frivolous self-confidence thing 
can really have a big impact in our lives. And so, and it all revolves around the negative beliefs that you have about yourself. So ask yourself these questions. And I do have some good things coming up. Are you speaking about yourself in a critical way? Do you ever say negative things like, oh, you suck, you know, you're not good, whatever? Do you ever speak to yourself like that? That's not great for your self-confidence. Do you set rules about how you should be instead of just being your true self? That's not great for your self-confidence. And then lastly, and this was my story, do you avoid or do you do you avoid things that you're not great at? Or do you have safety strategies that kind of protect you from doing those things that are outside your comfort zone that maybe you don't feel so confident in? And so what I realized is that's what I did. I would avoid those things that I didn't feel really confident about. And as such, I didn't really get to step into my greatness. And so I found this and I was so excited. I wanted to share it with you because it's called the faces of um, lack of confidence. So which one are you? And I'm going to tell you which one I am. Um, are you the imposter who always acts happy and successful? but is really terrified of failure. You live with this constant fear that you're gonna be found out. You need continuous success to maintain the mask of a positive self-confidence, and that may lead to problems with perfectionism, procrastination, competition, and burnout. Or are you the rebel who acts like the opinions of others are, you don't even care, it's not a problem. Um, that they don't even matter, but you really live in like constant anger about not feeling good enough. And you continually need to prove to others that their judgments and criticism don't hurt, which may lead to things like you blaming others excessively, breaking rules or laws or opposing authority, all because you don't feel confident. And then lastly, are you a victim with your self-confidence? You act helpless and unable to cope with the world and you wait for someone to come to your rescue. You use self-pity or indifference as a shield against fear and taking responsibility for changing your life. You look repeatedly to others for guidance, which can lead to problems such as unassertiveness, underachievement, and excessive reliance on others in relationships. And then what happens? Those people let you down. So who was I? I'm really excited to hear if you see yourself or maybe someone you know in one of these things. I was 100% the imposter about those things that I was not comfortable about. So I just was like, I'm good. Everything's fine. Not a problem. But guess what? I wasn't trying those things that made me uncomfortable. So... This was really helpful for me. I wish I'd had this a couple years ago. But now, enough bad things. Let me tell you some good things. So what I'd like you to do after you watch this live is I want, I'm going to give you 10 ways to boost your self-confidence. And I want you to put in the comments below what's one way that you can choose. And I'm going to tell you which one I'm going to do. So one, list your strengths. Take time, get a piece of paper and list your strengths. Because I want you to talk to yourself like you talk to your friends. Okay, so let's celebrate your strengths. Two, accept your limitations. Okay, so like one of the things you guys know is I started doing dancing, like structured dancing. So I did line dancing, I've been doing this African dancing, I've been doing this other thing. And it's that thing where you have to go five, six, seven, eight. And I'm horrible at it. Oh, cancel, cancel. I was not very good at it. And, um, but I kept doing it. And you know what? I'm getting better. I'm getting better. But only because I tried it. Don't should yourself, okay? Don't, don't spend a lot of energy deciding what you should do. Don't worry about it. What do you want to do? 
Um, gain some perspective. Step back. The, he the world is not going to heck in a handbasket. You just got this one little place that's not working so well for you. But you can work that out by increasing your self-confidence. Try something new. That's why I started this dancing thing. Like I literally now have this like mantra that I am dancing my way to joy and personal growth. So I now take three dance classes online, which is so awesome, every week. And again, I'm not amazing at it. So like one of the things I had to do, I found myself when I had my camera on, I was so nervous about what everybody else was doing in the Zoom. Nobody's paying attention to me, but I was really nervous. So as I'm walking into my self-confidence about being able to do dancing and I'm developing kinesthetic memory, I turn off the camera on Zoom. Oh my gosh, I have so much more fun now. Because again, I'm building my self-confidence muscle about being able to do structured dancing. Celebrate yourself. What are some things that you could do to celebrate just how amazing you are? That's something I don't do that often. So we gotta do more of that. We gotta celebrate ourselves. Accept compliments. These are all confidence boosters, you guys. If someone gives you a, uh, a compliment, are you the one that goes, oh, this little thing, I got that at the thrift store, or I only spent $5 for it. Oh, don't do that. If someone says something about you, here's what I had to do, because I was, I was notorious for that. If you said something about my clothes, I was gonna tell you how little I paid for it, and I was gonna tell you just something random. Now what I do is if you say something nice about me, I'm gonna take a breath and I'm gonna go, thanks. And I still might tell you my little story, but I'm gonna say thank you first. And that honors the other person. Um, what was I got two more? Show others how to treat you. Oh, this is huge. You guys, we teach other people how to treat us. No one can treat us badly against our will if we don't let them. So if you have people in your life that are treating you poorly, tell them to talk to the hand. We teach others how to treat us. Have people around you that treat you well. It's like so important. And then last is be kind to you. Be kind to you. Treat yourself like you treat your friends. And if you do one of these 10 things, which I will post after this live, you will build self-confidence. And when you build self-confidence, I'm telling you guys, my business took off. And it was all because I didn't feel confident. So Christine Arnell, I see you here. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you everybody for watching. Having a wonderful day. I cannot wait to hear which one of the 10 things you're going to do to build your self-confidence. And as I say every Monday, please don't ever forget that you deserve happiness now. Have a great day, everybody. Happy Monday. Build that self-confidence.